Buenas tardes. Qué bueno es estar aquí esta tarde con ustedes. Ah, les traigo muchos recuerdos de la diócesis de Honduras y del pueblo de la diócesis de Honduras. Don't worry, we won't go on. This is going to be a, a, a quickie, but I, I understand that they were concerned when Mr. Pina stood up because he said it was going to be short. <laughs> I will be shorter than Mr. Pina. <laughs> However, before, uh, before I begin, I want to, uh, on behalf of the diocese, brought a gift for El Obispo. So, and with all his uh, social agenda and taking care of y'all and all the party, I'm sure this is going to be appropriate for him. <laughs> There are no purple glasses in here. <laughs> oh, oh, we will use this. It's uh, precious Honduran wood, and uh, it's a gift from the staff and members of the clergy of the Diocese of Honduras. It gives me a great pleasure to be here with you again. Uh, remember that uh, it was here last, uh, last year, and uh, we have shared with you the ins and outs of the Diocese of Honduras. Bishop Pina uh, shared with you about the history of the coming about of the, of the diocese. And in my last appearance with you, I told you that we in the Diocese of Honduras has uh, a new process. But this new process uh, came about sometime. And as we speak of being uh, what God has done for us in our lives, uh, God has really uh, blessed and called and sent. I, as the bishop of the diocese, when I was consecrated 11 years ago, uh, took a verse of scripture as my verse of execution. And I've tried living into that verse of execution, plus others, but it's uh, Micah uh, chapter six, verse eight, which says, uh, oh man, this is what God uh, expects of you, that you do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. And to do justice in a situation, Bishop Pina told you that the church in Honduras has been around for over 150 years. But it has been 150 years of, of dependency. And in order to do justice to that, I think we need to change the paradigm and changing the paradigm I have. But to change that paradigm, that paradigm has become uh, the Goliath of my episcopate. <laughs> and one of the things I found out is I won't, as David did, I won't be able to do it with the first stone. <laughs> but we're not giving up. And what's that Goliath? That Goliath is called dependency. 150 years of dependency. And I am determined, with God's help, and with a little help from our friends, uh, to walk the Diocese of Honduras away from that legacy of dependency. It's not easy. It will take a lot of effort and a lot of wisdom. And I think I learned this from my mom. My mother uh, was a very humble lady who never went beyond the the fourth grade. But when I was growing up, she taught me well. And she said, uh, every day I had to repeat the Ten Commandments for her. And she said, just always remember the Ten Commandments. And I think I came from a family of 13 brothers and sisters. But I think I was the wisest one of them all. <laughs> because I. And she told me the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother that your day may be long upon the land which the Lord your God giveth you. And I've tried to live by that. And in living so, I've learned a part of her wisdom. 
And that wisdom has walked with me in trying to be just. In trying to be just to the church in Honduras, we cannot live stretching our hands out waiting for people to come to our aid and to give to us. Whatever God gives me to be in the Episcopate more will be uh, trying to find a stone and a slingshot to uh, earn the right stone at the Goliath of Dependency. The Diocese of Honduras uh, has uh, received, but we also need your prayers as we walk this road to, the, to self sufficiency. 2019 seems to be right around the corner. It's a challenge for the Diocese of Honduras, and it's a challenge for us all. The church that your ancestors take, took to us is alive and kicking, and you heard Bishop Pina made reference to it. There is 156 congregation in Honduras, 43 clergy, and I have 20 seminarians uh, almost ready to be ordained. But we need to work. And we need to become a diocese that will support itself. I hope that one of these, if I could come back to one of these conventions and go back to general convention and say, thank you very much for what you have done for us. We're ready to walk on our own. In the meantime, do remember us in your prayers because it's, it's not easy. And trying to change the mindset and the paradigm of the people and the clergy in the diocese of Honduras is a major undertaking. I know and I felt uh, your bishop as he expressed uh, his feeling and his emotion. I'm there every time I have my convention. And, but most of all, we do remember. And uh, Bishop Brewer, at the end of Matthew's Gospel in chapter 16, verse 28, another says, Remember that the end of the Great Commission, it says, I will be with you to the end of the ages. We are a God, of a, a church of a living God, a church where Jesus Christ is our uh, personal Savior and who leads the church in Honduras and leads the church in this country as we do His work. God bless you all and God bless you, Bishop Brewer. Thank you.